Hello, good day, and welcome back to Go on the Run. And today we're going to continue with Pocket Base. And in this video, I want to show you filtering operations. This is going to be a way for you to say which records you want back. Now, in the previous video, we looked at which fields you want to return, but you have no way to say, well, I don't want this record or that record. So today we're going to see exactly how we do that. So let's jump in. Here I am. Um, at my command line, I'm going to start a pocket base and at my episode nine directory. So I created this directory and I have everything running already so we can save some time so you don't have to see me type things up. But let's just reset and make sure that we're on the same page. So if I refresh here, you'll see um, these are the items and these are the items that we created together. So I did not add anything new. And so maybe what we want to do is not say give me all items and only give me back the name and description or the name and the price but maybe i want to say give me all items that are greater than a certain amount maybe greater than a hundred dollars or maybe give me find me the exact item that is for four dollars and 99 cents okay so that's how we can do it so let's jump to the documentation so if you go here click on this um, it's going to open up the documentation so let's zoom in there a little bit and as you remember, may recall, we were working with the web API reference because we are not using like a client SDK. So we went there and then we were looking specifically at API records, how to do like listing and so on. So we've done all these review, update, create and delete, but we're looking at listing, list slash search. And what we saw is that you can do pass a number of query parameters. Now we didn't look at page and per page and sort, but those are pretty easy. Um, what we did was we look at the expand and fields in the previous video. Now I want to focus on filter. So filter is pretty easy. It's also a query parameter and it says query para um, filter equals, and then here you can pass, um, an expression, I would call it. And so this expression is, you know, made up of several, um, my smaller expression. So there's a more complex expression you have title. And we can see what this means. It essentially means contains or like, or contains the word ABC of the title for this collection you're querying. Um, that value contains the word ABC and created the date it was created is, you know, after this date. And so um, this seems pretty straightforward, right? I mean, it's just operand, operator, operand. And you could say this force operator could be the field name from your collection, or it could be the one that's after, but I tend to like using the field name first. I feel it reads easier. And then you have all these operate, um, operators. Now, what I'm going to show you is how I like to think about these operators. So as not to get confused, I was thinking how I can illustrate this for you. So I like grouping these operators into the ones that sort of do a discrete comparison, which means on an exact value. And then the ones here that do things that are contains within like part of or a substring. And then the ones that operate on a collection or multiple selection. And you will see what I mean. All right. So with that in mind, let's jump to some slides and then we'll come back to the examples. So like I said, I like grouping the operators. And so I'll say if you're accessing a field and that field type or the value of that type is a string numeric value, it's null or like true or false, like Boolean, then that's a very discrete type of operation you want to perform. And so that's when you're going to say equals to say, I'm looking for something that exactly matches this or doesn't match this or is greater than this, greater than, equal, less than, or less than, equal. So that's very, very specific. On the other hand, if you have a string as the value in that field and you want to know if it contains something, again, you're not looking for a very exact value. You're just looking to see if it contains maybe ABC. Then you want to use this twilder to mean like it's like this or um, it has this substring or not this substring. So for those who know SQL, this is equivalent to when you use the like operator and then you use like percent to represent those wild cards or the spaces, the places where you don't care about. Um, we'll see a little bit of examples of these. So I'm just going to try and keep it moving here. So we, this video is not too long. The other one is if you have a field that has multiple selections, you may recall that from 
the design of our ERD or entity relationship diagram that we have um, these entities, which you know are our collections. But if you look at our card, for example, it has this field called payment method. And this was a single selection, which means you can only select one way we should pay. But remember, we could also do multiple selection. So this wasn't a relation to anything else. It was just that this field could have multiple values. So it could have, you pay with a credit card, you pay part of it with cash or multiple credit cards or credit card and PayPal, something like that, right? So it was a multiple um, selection field. So in that case, since you're testing against a collection, you might want to be able to say, hey, um, I need at least one of the thing in that collection to match. And so this is how you say at least one. You put the question mark to mean at least one. And so then you follow it up with equals to say, at least one of, them, one of the elements there have to be exactly this value I'm gonna pass, or not the value, or greater than the value, less than the value, blah, blah, blah. But also notice, you also have the twiddle to say, at least one of the values should contain or not contain. So notice how this combines all of this, but it says at least one, and that's on a like a multiple selection or an array. But then we also have things that are relation, right? That when you say it's related to another thing or another field, it could be just related to one thing or related to many things. Now, if it's really related to one thing, then that's no big deal. But it's when it's related to many things. So for us, that would be in the case where we have an item. And an item have multiple relationship, right? It, ha it can have this one labels field could essentially represent, it's an array also, right? But it's to another collection. And so this collection itself have a name. And so in that case, when you access this a record in the items collection, you're saying that for the fields, um, the labels field, that name, for example, should at least contain or equals to blah, 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 right? So you, you have the same thing, it should be equals, but then again, you're, act, you're operating on a collection that you got through a relationship, right? Like a nested relationship. And I'm gonna try and show you examples of this uh, to try and make it hopefully easier to comprehend. So let's get back to the demos. So I'll go straight to example one. So in example one, I'm going to call this like discrete searching, if you like. And so let's close this up for now. And you can see here, I'm saying find item that costs exactly $4.94. So if we go back here and we look at our collections and we look at items, we should expect to see that when we say find item that costs exactly $4.99, we should get back pencils. And so let's run that. And so we send that request and we get back one item, a total of one item. And you can see it's the pack of pencil. That's because we search on the price field. We look specifically for that 99. Another example could be like, let's find all items that have whiteboard in the name, right? Or find all whiteboards. Now we might have several whiteboard markers that we're selling you know, from different suppliers or maybe the same suppliers, but they are different prices. Maybe there's a cheap version, a medium version, whatever, you know, but they all just call whiteboard markers and then we can show that to the user and then they can um, pick the one that they like. So again, we're just looking for all items where the name is equal specifically, right? Notice this is a number, this is a string, but we're looking specifically for the string that says whiteboard marker. And we can make things a little bit, easier to read by putting this on another line like this. Remember that how we can do that too. And so if I send this request, notice I get back one thing and it's again, the, the dry eraser description and the name, since I look for name, it whiteboard markers. And that's exactly what I look for. Um, here is an exact match too, but I'm here I'm looking exactly for things that are, that cost hundred dollars or more and so we have greater than equal don't worry about the symbol here it is greater than equal for me i'm just using um, a font type that you now um, make me 
shows greater than equal instead of two character spaces take up one like this so don't get confused about that um, I've been using that for a while and so um, once again if I send this I should get back two items why because if we look here we have two items that are greater than a hundred dollars okay or a hundred dollars or more is what our query says and so we get like two items and there they are the nice canceling headphones and the set of Harry Potter books so with that said now let's move on to look at um, contains so if we close this example one we go to exercise two we look at contains close up to give us some space let's find all the items with the word book in the description again let's go back here to our thing and look at our collection and look at description and so we have this Harry Potter has book in the description we don't have anything else with book in the description but notice oh we're not looking for the exact value of description we're looking for something like a word that's contained there and so we're going to say description the field name twilda or contains the word book and in a query if you're thinking about sql query it's like now notice and this is mentioned in the description in the documentation if you do not specify a percent where the wildcard character should go if you leave that out what happens is pocket base is smart enough to wrap the entire thing with this wildcard character on both sides okay so it puts a percent at the beginning and a percent at the end which means that oh, i'm looking for this as a substring which means anywhere within that book i will see an example of what i mean by that just now so if we send this it will get back one item and we got back a set of harry potter books the next example here is where we're combining um, multiple fields so we're going to say let's find all items that has um, the word of anywhere in the name because again it's name twilda which means you know match this string and because i didn't put any percent it's going to wrap it automatically pocket base is going to wrap it it's almost as if i did this this is what pocket base is going to do which means any number of characters before any number of characters afterward but pocket base allow me to save some typing by just leaving that off and it's going to wrap it automatically for me so i'm saying find all items where the name has um you know contains the word of or not and or description contains obviously any one of the two then bring back that item and so if we take a look at what we should expect to see we're going to see that yep harry potter have of in the description nothing else i have of in the description but let's look at name a lot of rings I have of in the description so we should give back the harry potter books and the lord of the rings um movie collection and so if we send that we got back okay three things all right so maybe i missed one oh pack of pencils ah there you go pack of pencils um you know the to, um, lord of the rings and then of course the um harry potter books collection all right so that works now the final example here with collections is set now remember i said if you don't specify the percent what happens well it gets wrapped for you but what if i want to specifically look for things that have set not anywhere within it but specifically the description start with set and so now by me putting a percent i'm saying i want um the wild cards or anything that i don't specify to come after this okay remember when i don't specify it pocket base wrapped it automatically with percent on both sides but now since i specify percent pocket base doesn't do anything to my query value here and so i'm saying look for anything that has set da -da 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 -da. i don't care what comes afterward but it must start with set so let's go back here to our collection and if we look we'll see that they are part of um, books description says set of all our product books but we don't have anything else but set anywhere else in between right so let's do that let's add something real quick and so we'll say just a test this has set in the description right 
And so we're going to ignore the price and all that good stuff. And so now we have two records with set in it. And so let's see what happens. So first, let's just send this like this. And we get back one record because we're specifically saying we want to just the record with the description has set as the very first um, word. And just to show you that if I remove this and I send it again, now I'll get back two records because I'll get the one for Harry Potter where set occurs in a big name, but also I'll get the one that I just created where it has set somewhere else in the description. So that's just to show you that you can sort of restrict things. Now, if I want it to be at the end, or you know, I could say something like this, not necessarily end, but it says find all things where I don't care what comes first, but then there's definitely set um, somewhere after the stuff I don't care about. Definitely play around with those so you can understand it. So close that. Let's close this. And then the last bit here is on the mod, at least one, what the pocket based um, documentation call um, any or at least one of and again you can see the same thing here right at least one of equal at least one of not equal blah 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 same thing over and over i think once you played it a little bit with some examples you get the hang of it so let's close this and so let's find items where at least one label has fiction now let's go back to our collection here and we can see that we're looking at items and there's a labels field which is actually to a relationship with multiple right which can have multiple values for that um that collection that's related to and so we're looking for something that has at least fiction in it and specifically if you look we're saying at least one and we use equal so remember equal is an exact match so we're saying at least one of the labels that name so labels that name that collection the multiple relation collection should the name value should have exactly the word fiction, but at least, okay? Because since we have multiple labels attached to an item, well, you know, it could be, we just want where exactly one item is thing, or when if it's at least one of them, maybe two or three of them could match. So you never know, right? And so let's see, let's send this request and we got like zero item. Well, we just, looked and we saw that oh, there are many things that have um, the label where an item has uh, labels that at least one thing is fiction, right? So there is two already right here. We can see it. So why did it fail? That's because I look for exact, at least exact. And so there is nothing with fiction, but there's something with the word fiction with a capital F, not lowercase f. So just changing the case because I'm looking for exact now we can see those two items got returned. So just be careful when you're trying to find exactly, if you're not getting what you're looking for, make sure that all you're matching the case because that is exactly what we, when you do an exact search, that's what you're looking for. When I look for the name here, I'm looking for specifically whiteboard markers. If I use different cases for, you know, lowercase w, then it's not going to match it because I'm looking for exactly that with the equal sign. And similarly for, or at least when we use the equal sign, yes, we're still saying at least one thing that exactly matches this. So, yeah. Okay. So hopefully that helps clear up something for you. And then here, notice we looking for fiction, this time with lowercase, but we change this from an exact match to say it's like, right? So like a substring, but not only is it a substring, but it doesn't use the case. So just go, simply going from this to this, well, rather from above here, from, from equal sign to twilda, let's see what happened. This works. This works just as this guy up here, but it allows us the flexibility that, hmm, we didn't have to worry about the case. So keep that in mind. So we're saying at least one thing that's fiction and that works. The last example here um, is that we're going to say we want labels that name that matches anything like FIC. Okay. Notice this is also a substring. This is a word that's a substring, but this is just a few characters that's a substring. So how does this change thing? Well, 
now because again we're just looking for a few characters and not even a whole word notice how we match many many more things and to see why if we go here we're going to see fic here for fiction we see fic here for office fic here for fiction again and then fic here for office and that's why our result shows four items return so hopefully this gives you an idea of how you can use these operators and how you can use filtering to limit the number of records. Now, you can still go ahead and do all the things we did last week, which is, well, I only want to return, let's say, for each item, the name and the price, you know, send that. And now you can see we return only the name and price for each item. So you can still combine it. Remember, it's query parameters. So you just do ampersand and had the different query parameters. Okay, that's it for this video. I want to thank you for sticking with it to the end. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for sticking with it and coming back. And definitely want to thank Mikhail for being a Patreon subscriber. If you would like to be um, another Patreon subscriber for the channel or support the channel in any other way, there are a few ways in which you can do that. And with that, Take care, see you in the next video. Stay safe, bye.